Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. The reason we call it the Bear Wozniak Adventure is because every one of us is called to be in a, on an adventure from the Lord. And we have a guest today that really his, the story of his life and uh, his adventure, uh, it goes deep. We're looking forward to having as our guest today, Royce Hood. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, the word adventure is just a word that we use when we say everything went wrong. <laughs> you know, and one of the keys in life is to be able to turn adversity into adventure. And you do that by, by pursuing God's will. Our motto, our creed at uh, our ministry is that the most radical quest a man can pursue is to uh, abandon himself to the wild adventure of God's will. When you give your life to the Lord, when you say, yes, Lord, when you say, thy will be done to God, that very, very, very dangerous prayer, get ready for the ride of your life. And you know why? Because you get to be, you get to be right where God's doing stuff. You know, when you say, thy will be done, you get to see God do stuff. He puts you right in the front lines, and you get to be right there to witness the, 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 the love and the power and the goodness of the Lord. So we have as our, as our guest today, someone who interviewed me on his show. Uh, I think it's called Truth Culture Life, right? That's the name of the show. And uh, and uh, I liked being on the show so much. I said, why don't you come on my show? So <laughs> we have Royce Hood with us. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure, Royce. Bear, that was my strategy all along was because uh, I knew you wouldn't just invite me on your show unless you knew who I was. So my strategy yes. was to invite you onto my own program and uh, schmooze you a bit, and then hopefully uh, you'd reciprocate. It worked. Well, as George Bush would say, that strategery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It's strategery. I, I like that. I, I think it was actually Will Ferrell's imitation of him. By the way, you know what? I, I in my in one of my in, in one of my books, I I, I uh, give a shout out to um, the anchor man. What 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 was that person's name in the anchor man? I forget his name again. Oh, uh, Ron Ron Burgundy. Ron Burgundy. Yeah, I gave a shout yeah. out to Ron Burgundy. Thank you for all, for inspiring me and always being classy. And then we watched the Anchorman the other day. I go, dude, I can't believe I, I did that shout out to him. Not that you know, I had a lot of kind of gnarly stuff in there. It probably isn't appropriate. But anyway, yeah, it's good, so good to have you here with us on, on our show. Tell us, uh, tell us we, what we really want to do, uh, more so with you than with a lot of people. I just think you have a great story to tell. Um, and can you just give it, can you just kind of, I just like to hear your, your journey of faith with the Lord. You live in Philadelphia? When oh you're, man, you're I live in Peoria, Illinois. It starts with a P, anyway. Oh. Yeah, Peoria, Fulton Sheen, the home of uh, the Fulton oh, Sheen that... uh, Museum. Yeah, well, uh, what did but you... I'm not. Fr Go yeah, ahead. Ahead. No, I'm not from here, Barry. Um, I am. I'm a Florida native, very proud Florida native. I grew up on the beach in Jupiter, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, so we should talk about swells sometimes. Hawaii has much better swells than Jupiter. Jupiter only really only has great swells when a big storm's coming. But we've got the Jupiter Inlet. Juno mm, Beach. So famous. I, you know, the worst part for me, uh, from from moving from Florida to Illinois, besides paying personal income tax now in Illinois, is as I miss the beach. I really do. I can't imagine. It's so hard to be away from the water. You know, um, people don't get the wrong impression. Florida surf is is not always that big, and it's not always that great of a shape. But it's pretty gnarly because when it gets even head high or a little bit higher. Uh, it's hard to paddle out because you're going, you're, you're paddling through norm, mostly sandbars, unless you're by an inlet someplace, or or, or or maybe a pier. Sometimes will set things up different. But in Hawaii, when it's 20, 30 feet, you can still you can be right next to the wave, but you're in. There's a reef, and then there's deep channel, and then there's a reef. So it's it doesn't take a manly guy to get out. You know, usually yeah. to get out to the big surf. But in Florida, you might have you might be getting paddling for 20 minutes and getting swept a quarter of a mile down the beach. You know. That's right. No, especially uh, in the southern parts. If you're up in northern Florida, you know, Cape Canaveral, Merritt Island, Cocoa Beach, th that, that area has some, you know, you have to go out pretty far. Um, but we've got the Gulf Stream off the coast of Jupiter, which makes the, um, the swells a little bit better during storms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's always a riptide. You got to be careful. But it's, it's a lot of fun. 
Um, but yeah, listen, adventure. You you said something at the top of the program. You mentioned you know adventure and you know sort of turning adversity into you know opportunity. I I guess I have always been a glass half full kind of guy without ever even understanding what that meant. As a young man, um, I was you know I have a wonderful wonderful mother who's um, been in my corner since b- before day one. Um, I was born out of wedlock, never knew my biological father. We, we, my family went through ups, all sorts of ups and downs, as most families do. Yeah, don't, 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 um, don't just skip over it. Tell, t- you know, take your time. Tell us the story. Yeah, yeah. No, it's interesting. You know, I mean, just from a spiritual standpoint, I was baptized Catholic, but I was not raised in the Catholic Church. My grandparents were practicing Catholics on my mother's side, and so because of them. I would go to a Catholic church here and there. I would learn some of the Catholic prayers. I um, I went through uh, you know the whole process of first communion and everything else. But apart apart from some of those things that were the the tradition that my mom had grown up with, we really weren't practicing. Church was not a central part of our life. But on the other hand, I was I always had a deep faith. Mm. Um, I didn't know Jesus Christ. At, when I was a young man, but I knew God. I, I prayed to God the Father. And and I also had a relationship with my guardian angel, which is interesting. And I can get into that a little bit more in a few minutes. So I was exposed to a lot of different Christian churches. When I was four years old, my mother married a gentleman who um, adopted me and became my, my legal father. I took his last name, which is why I'm a hood. And so, and because of him, we started, you know, every now and then we'd go to different churches, everything that you can imagine um, in the Protestant world. And so it was interesting. I was exposed to a lot of different denominations, but again, wasn't central. We struggled a lot. So when I was born, we were very, very poor. When my mother married Walton, our lifestyle changed. He had been a successful businessman. So we had this like drastic change. I was too young to remember it, but we went from one bedroom apartment eating peanut butter and jelly at night to living very well and traveling and the country club and all this different stuff that you can imagine that a successful business guy would expose his family to in South Florida. They were only married for nine years. And it was, it was, there was some difficult parts of, of life during that time. There were some great parts as well. Um, but after they got a divorce was a really difficult time for me. Although at the time, I was happy they got a divorce because it was a truly unhealthy relationship. There was a lot of things in the family that were that were difficult spiritually and mentally and so forth. When they got a divorce, though, I was 13 years old. I was going through a super awkward phase of my life and it just I went from having like this family structure to no structure at all. And so you can imagine a 13 year old growing up two minutes from the beach. Um, with no father figure around, I sort of rebelled and went wild. And it was, it was a truly interesting period of time, but I wouldn't, I I hope my children don't experience some of the things that I experienced because it was, uh, it was tough as well. Um, every, you know, anything you can imagine me, I was, I was just a young man. I had pimples, I had braces. I thought I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I thought I wanted to be a rock star at the time. Um, and so I started, I joined some bands. I was a singer in a band. Actually, we were pretty good too. And you played but the I guitar was so too? Far. I, I did. I played the guitar. I, um, I sang, I played keyboards. I used to ride a bus after my parents got a divorce. Our, so it was interesting. We started off poor and be, became sort of, I, I guess you could say a sort of a wealthier family. And then once they got a divorce, we were like, we jumped down the ladder big time. And I stayed with my mom. Um, and so I went from living in the country club to living outside of the country club, which is an awesome experience because I, I think I was very exposed to a different aspect of the world. I started riding a bus to the Gardens Mall in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, and I would play a keyboard every, almost every weekend at Radio Shack at the time. And some of our younger listeners have no idea what Radio Shack was. That's right. But they had, right? They had keyboards. And so I would go in there and I would just play for hours. And I taught myself how to play on that keyboard really and it was interesting and i must have driven the people there nuts but they never kicked me out so they were pretty nice i guess anyway it it was about a year or two and eventually um i got that keyboard as a christmas present which was awesome 
<laughs> it was an old Yamaha PS board. I'd played it so much. They probably said, hey, we'll give you a discount. Just get this kid out of our store. Yeah, I, I, um, I imagine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, well, and, let, let, um, let me take a break here. We're talking with Roy yeah. Hood is our guest. His show is called Truth. Wait a minute. Truth, Culture, Life. And uh, been a guest on his show. It's good to have you on our show. Um, where can people find you? We're gonna we'll be we're gonna take yeah. a little break here. All my different projects are at RoyceHood.com. There should be links on there. It's updated regularly. So RoyceHood.com. Uh, this this is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We'll be right back with. More. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue. Through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been? And how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion. Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite everybody. You know what? My new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, is, is out, and it's doing really well. It's, it's gone up uh, quite well in, the, in, its, in its rankings, and, and it's because of you guys um, going online and buying the book, and you know who it's really f about? It's the, it's the mama bears out there that are buying it for their husbands and their, and their brother-in-laws and the men and their sons. Uh, but go to Amazon.com or go to – you can go to the Barnes & Noble bookstores or go to um, – our site, deepadventure.com, and get this book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Women love this book, too. It has lessons for you, and I think, actually, that would be a really good book for young women to read so they, they can learn what kind of man that they want to find for their lives. But it's a great book for fathers to read to their sons or even single moms to read to their sons. Uh, it's a good book for men to use in, in uh, small men's groups. So uh, go, go and uh, check out the book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone?, published by Sophia. Our guest today is Royce Hood. Uh, I got to be on his show, Truth, Culture, and Life. Uh, and I thought, I got to get to know this guy better. I know, he, I know just the fact that you're friends with Jason Jones is reason enough not to have you on the show. But <laughs> we're going to do it anyway. But you, you were telling us about, you know, it's an interesting thing. You, your, your mother, a lot, of, a lot of, I mean, praise God for your mom who you were born out of wedlock. You never really knew your dad. But she carried you and she kept you. I mean, that's a, that's a courageous woman. Just that, that alone says a lot about your mom. Yeah, there were people at the time when she was pregnant with me that told her to get rid of the problem. And I wasn't raised necessarily like, oh, I have to be involved in the pro-life movement. But I always recognized the beauty of a baby, right? I think most kids do. If yeah. you ask a little child and, you know, there's a pregnant woman, you say, hey, what's, what's, in that, what's in that woman's 
tummy, right? They're going to say it's a baby. Kids know. You yeah. have to be a dumb adult it's to, not a fetus. to somehow. It's a baby. Right? Yeah. Right. And uh, it's the adults that complicate <laughs> things. You know, so I was telling you my story. And just long story short. No, don't make th- it short. My- don't make it short. We want to hear it. Well, I could, I'm a lawyer. I could talk for a really, really long oh, okay. time. Oh, no, we're in the danger zone, gentlemen. <laughs> I'll give you the, yeah, you're in the danger zone when you say don't, <laughs> don't make it short. Um, you know, the, during my teen years, I was, I started working at a restaurant. I would ride my bike two miles every day to, to get to this work. I scrubbed dishes. It was a big culture shock for me. Going from, again, l- growing up on the water and traveling around to working at a restaurant to buy myself a skateboard and try to save up for that keyboard, which I ended up getting as a gift. Long story short, I was introduced to all sorts of bad things. Again, no father figure in my life at that time. Um, Everything from drugs, promiscuity, to partying, to all sorts of just stuff that a young, vulnerable teenager would be interested in and exposed to. And I I really did believe at the time that like, wow, I'm gonna be this like rock star guy. And that's what I thought, because I figured that was a way to to achieve um, worldly wealth, to achieve popularity, to fit in, to be liked, all these things. And I felt I always felt like sort of an outcast growing up. But it was interesting at night. Every night I remember I, I had this prayer life. And again, I didn't know Jesus. I didn't know the saints. I, I had been baptized. I had been um, catechized to a point, but we weren't practicing. And at some point or another, I was probably 19 years old. My mother went on a pilgrimage over to Europe. She went to um, to Rome. She also went to Medjugorje. And she experienced this profound reversion back to her roots in the Catholic Church. And she loved it so much that she ended up taking my brother, Sean, who grew up in a different home. We had different fathers. He grew up in an atheist home. And then shortly after he went, she invited me and took me on the trip as well. So she ended up going like three times in a span of just a few years. And when I was there, I the I had this experience that was truly profound. Where were remarkable. you? Medjugorje I was or in Rome? Medjugorje. Okay. Yeah, Medjugorje. We were staying. I, we were. I was with a group of about I don't know six other uh, teen guys my age. We were on a balcony looking over Mount Kresovic, and in. Medjugorje behind us, what, what the, these streets were just covered with pilgrims at this youth festival and they were singing and chanting and doing the rosary, doing the Ave Maria song. And, and just it was just beautiful, a candlelight procession through the streets. And we we're sitting on the balcony of our um, little hotel, whatever you call it, our apartment, looking at Mount Kresovic. Now, for people that know, Medjugorje is one little village and then Kresovic is the next village and Mount Kresovic is oftentimes referred to as Cross Mountain. Um, we saw something happening on top of the mountain that was really interesting. There's no electricity. There's this giant rock cross that was built, I don't know, 50, 60 years ago, maybe longer, no electricity whatsoever. The cross was com- started to completely illuminate and lit up as if somebody was shining a spotlight on it, but there was no spotlight. The other thing is when you're standing in the village of Medjugorje, you can see little faint flashlights of people that make the trek up the mountain at night. You walk barefoot and you hit the stations of the cross. You can see the little faint flashlights. Well, all of a sudden, as people behind us are doing this profession and singing and praying, we start seeing bright little lights zipping up the mountain going into the cross. It was it was unbelievable. It was truly um it was a sight to be seen and there was more stuff that happened after that that i can get more into but it without sounding too kooky it, it was unbelievable let's put it this way um i felt at that moment that i was being blessed with something so truly magnificent and wonderful that i i dropped to my knees and i just started praying and thanking the lord that i was there and it was it was that moment that sparked my what i would guess i would call conversion although again i had been baptized and had gone you know through the first communion and so forth it was it was what really brought me to the church um that moment i i started really getting interested in the mystical side of our church and and just starting to reading about the saints and all the different just mysteries and beautiful things that occur and of course of course the most amazing mystery and mystical part of our church is the real presence uh, which is a miracle that people can expose themselves to every the, single day. The real presence of the body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. That's right. Yeah, okay. That's right. 
Yeah. So um, that's, you know, that's how I, I, I think my faith as a Catholic started to grow. That moment planted the seed. I went home and um, it took a while for it to really take hold and for me to truly understand. You know, it's interesting when you're poorly catechized, uh, you might think you're doing great stuff. But the more you learn about the social te teachings of the church, you're like, oh, wait a minute. I can't do that either. Oops. OK, um, time to go back to confession. Well, 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 right? let, me, let me ask you a question, though. When you yeah. learn when you learn these things that you just say, well, I guess if that's what the church says, then that must be right. Or do you but or do you do you hear the teaching and hear the underlying principles based on philosophy and theology and, the, you know, the gospel? And you go, yeah, that's right. That makes sense. That's true. yeah. It's I, not like I'm just going to accept it. <clears throat> it 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 it's it's faith seeking understanding, right? You really know it. Yeah, that teaching that's correct. I think for me, it, you know, I've always had an inquisitive mind, and I always I was told a lot when I was a kid, stop asking why. <laughs> I was one like, of those kids. Didn't they yeah. add, didn't they tell Thomas Aquinas that he was the dumb ox because he asked too many <laughs> questions, right? Yeah. And, you know, I ended up going to law school and, um, you know, so as a lawyer, I like to look at look at things. So I'm, I'm attracted to, to the to the aspects of my faith that are, I, th I guess, the mystical side of the church. I love, but I love the real teachings as well and the, just the rich history. But mm -hmm. yeah, for me, the more the more that I learned, the freer I felt. Yes. Well said. Right? Yeah. And uh, it's amazing. Did you People find your mind? Like, did you find your mind kind of locking into order, like click, 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 and then there's just this clarity. Yes. From from, the, from understanding the teaching. Fides et ratio is the uh, yeah. the motto of Ave Maria School of Law: Faith and Reason. Right. And the more the more we can kind of encapsulate that the truth of our faith and and reason. I mean, yeah, it's it, it really sets you free. People look at our faith a lot of times. And I think, you know, from the outsiders are like, oh, you know, I don't know what they call us, you know, those crazy Catholics and can't do anything. Well, yeah, the Catholics I know have a lot of fun and we have a great time. Uh, yeah. And, but wow, we can, we can live according to a compass that really is 2000 plus years old and cultural trends ebb and flow. Church has been rock solid and it will continue to be yeah, it's Christ's church. Uh, church. I love that the, the church's teaching doesn't change. That's right. You know, there may be new, there may be new nuances or understandings of that, but, the, but it's not like we're run by a, we're not run by a, a church council. You know, like I think about, and we have our councils, but it's that, but, but, you know, they're subject, you know, to the Pope and to the, you know, I won't get into all the theology of that, but <clears throat> so many of the Protestant churches, their teaching changes every year, you know, with the same sex well, they marriage. Pick what or, they, they, they pick what they want, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so the, the, I love, love the thing about the Catholic church. It's, it's like a big ship, you know. It, it's kind of got its course, and you're not going to change. You're not going to change its course. We're talking with Royce Hood. Um, I didn't know. I, I, I had suspected you were an attorney. Had I known, I probably wouldn't have had you on my show. But, no, we have Royce Hood with us. Uh, he's a good friend of Jason Jones, who uh, everyone knows on our show. People love love having Jason Jones. So we, since I knew he was good friends with Jason, we have him on our show. His radio show is Truth, Culture, Life. And uh, we'll write back, be right back to find out more, more of his story. This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up, Fear. Years ago, during the midnight of my soul, I considered ending it all. My pain was serious, hard to bear. Two things kept me from self-propelling myself across the Grim Reaper's bridge to eternity concern for my children, and two, the fear of God. When the love of God doesn't convince you, the fear of God will keep you. I, now, I love my daddy, and my daddy loved me, but it was a healthy fear of my daddy that kept me from doing wrong. The prospect of my daddy's rawhide, meaty hand applied to my posterior was, well, I might trouble at the time, and that was a good thing. He never injured me, just applied the right amount of motivation where it was needed. I enjoy God's love daily, repeatedly. It comforts me. But it's the Good Shepherd's rod and staff that prevent me from harming myself and others and keeps me out of trouble. His rod protects me from the enemy, and it disciplines me. Folks don't like hearing about the fear of God no more. In fact, enlightened folks, so-called, think 
Such fear is primitive religion or superstition. Folks like the shepherd's staff that rescues, but not so much the rod that is to be feared. Yes, fear means awe and respect, but it also means fear. Daddy's discipline only needed to be applied now and then. One episode left a lasting impression. Yet I had his protection, provision, and love every day. Isaiah prophesied that Christ would, quote, delight in the fear of the Lord, end of quote. Since Jesus did so, seems we should be mindful of doing the same. Yeah. This is Dan Laboon Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite everybody to go to uh, deepadventure.com and become a member of the Man Cave or become a Mama Bear. Our new season of Long Ride Home, uh, 11 episodes filmed right here in Hawaii, is now airing on EWTN. You can see it there, or you can go to our website and become a member, and then you get access to all 33 episodes of Long Ride Home. Uh, the YouTube, private YouTube uh, 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 links, but you can show, share them with your family and friends and people that you want to evangelize that are kind of, are kind of gritty and aren't going to just accept, um, need, need to be communicated with in a, in, a, in a special way. Long Ride Home does that for you. So go there and become a member of uh, the Mama Bears or become a member of the Man Cave. We have with us today our guest, uh, Royce Hood, his show Truth, Culture, Life. So, so as you're, go ahead, we're, you're, you're telling us your story uh, of how um, you had this experience. Now, when you had the experience of Magigori, did you, would you sense, like for me, I had a personal conversion. I mean, I, I, was, I was involved in the Catholic Charismatic Renewal, and uh, I wasn't involved. I just went to a prayer meeting, and when I asked him to pray with me, I, I felt the Holy Spirit just, just uh, fill me. Was yours, uh, what, did you have a personal experience of the infusion of the Holy Spirit, or was it more uh, an intellectual thing that evolved, or did it go hand in hand, or how, how did all that work? I think a little bit of both. I mean, I've felt this, I felt the grace a number of times, mm. either you know in that moment in Medjugorje, or even at times in. So it wasn't just it mass. wasn't just seeing what you saw, you experienced the Holy Spirit witnessing to you and infusing His li life in you. I felt like I, in a way, was extremely blessed, but also now I have this big challenge on my shoulders because, you know, Jesus always says, you know, that, uh, Jesus said that, um, you know, blessed are those who uh, believe without seeing. I'm like, uh oh, now I've seen something. Uh, what does that say about me? Right. Um, I've got this grace, but it's also this, I don't want to say burden, but it's this, this responsibility now. Like I know what I've seen. I know what I have experienced. Right. I've got this in this mind where, um, you know, if somebody said they, you know, they saw something like what I, I saw, I think I would probably be a bit skeptical, but I, I felt something just like mm -hmm. what you're, what you were describing, so, so, you know, that, that personal encounter, that's just unshakable. And, you know, and for me too, like I, I had a miraculous healing of my back. Um, and I, I share that because, you know, I'm a world champion tandem surfer. I lift a woman, I lift my wife when we surf 
so it was wasn't my, my my strength it was by the lord's but our job isn't necessarily to be a theologians or apologists our job is to be a witness i saw this i felt this oh tell me about god no i'm not going to tell you about him i know him i don't just have to tell you the theology or you know as peter said the reason for our hope we need to know the reason but you don't have to be the most sophisticated person in the world to be able to say i know jesus i know way down in my knower I know him. I, I experience him, and you can too. You don't have to. Yeah. My mom used yeah. to say that Christianity was an elevator religion. That you could tell people about Christianity from the time you get on the elevator to the time you get off. That's the simple <laughs> gospel. But then, of course, there's all this tremendous depth of, of of truth that we have, and depth of relationship. But that really, all God's asking you to do out there is uh, be a witness. I know what Jesus has done in my life. But now, mm. continue now with your, with your yeah. story. Yeah, you know, a number of years went by. I um, still was holding on to this dream of becoming a rock star. But I, and I, had, I didn't go to college right away, by the way, after high school. I had a really difficult time uh, going to high school. I was told, I, I remember going to a guidance counselor once, and they said, well, what do you think you want to do when you grow up? And I was like, well, I'm either going to be a, um, a rock star. If that doesn't work out, maybe I'll be an attorney. And they sort of, they literally laughed. They're like, yeah, you, there's no way you're ever going to be an attorney and good luck with the rock star, the star thing. <laughs> and uh, so it was interesting. I, I had no confidence academically until I was in about my mid twenties. I'd been involved in some business um, startups that were successful, some foundations. I had gotten involved in real estate sales to sort of pay my way. And I started going to class at night, graduated going to a university at night, paying my way, brokering real estate. Uh, in South Florida. And at the time I graduated, I was working on music as well. And some producers from Nashville invited me to come to Nashville for a few months and write music and possibly help them write music for other artists. And it was a foot in the door, an opportunity to write, possibly get music placed with a big artist and then, you know, have those relationships. At the same time, I had taken the LSAT, which was the law school prep test, and applied to a few secular schools and I got into a few places, didn't really get any great offers. I got an inquiry from Ave Maria School of Law in Naples, Florida. And I thought, well, geez, this is weird. I never applied to them, but they must have heard of me somehow. Uh, I don't know how they heard of me, but this is this is great. And I sort of stroked my ego. Well, it turns out my mom had sent in as much information as she could to the law school. And they were, Ave Maria School of Law started in Ann Arbor and the inaugural year was going to be 2009. No so this is kidding. probably probably no. 2008. And founded by the and, by uh, the gentleman who who started Domino's, right? That's right, Tom Monahan. And uh, so, so I was invited to an open house, uh, went and just fell in love. The first thing I saw when I got to campus was this statue of Our Lady. So I was at this crossroads. I'm like, wow, go to Nashville, pursue this dream that I've had since I was a kid, or go to law school. Like, what? How do you even like? If I look back now, it's like, wow, that's a tough call. But I felt so at home. I'd always struggled. Like I never felt, I never felt at home before anywhere. Um, I always felt like I didn't fit in, right? And yeah. I got there, and this the statue of Our Lady greets us, and I felt I felt at home. I was like, I have to go here. You're, you're being led by the Holy Spirit, right? Absolutely. Now, 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 Holy wanna, Spirit action plan. No, we, we may not have time to do this, but <clears throat> the music thing is still going to be there, whether you're whether that's happening right now for you or not. The music is still going to be very special. But sometimes God gives us a, a vision, but it's for future years. And in the meantime, there's these steps that we take. I don't know. I don't want to skip ahead and hear, hear if you're doing anything more in music. But I know in my own life, uh, for example, I, I, went to, I went to do radio in, at Baylor University, took a radio class. And they go, oh, yeah, you're good at this. But uh, I go, well, how can I make a living? Because I, want, I wanted to be married and had ki have kids. You go, well, you're going to probably be selling advertising for a while, and you're not, not going to make much money. So I, I went and got, I became a CPA instead, right? But now here's all these future years, and now I'm doing radio. So sometimes God will give you a vision, and I'm just not talking to you, but to other, the, our listeners. Yeah. There's, a, there's a scripture verse in Habakkuk. Uh, write the vision down in letters that are big enough so the one who's reading it can run while they're reading. And if the vision tarries, wait for it, for surely it will come. And I'm looking at you, and I'm looking at Gabriel's trumpet there behind you. And I know there's another, there's a guitar back there too. And don't don't skip ahead. But I know that if that if that music isn't there for you now, that there's 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 a time when God will use it. But I, I'm interrupting your 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 um your story. 
But will you no, come words back? of wisdom. Will you be coming back to the music thing, or is that going to happen later in your life? Yeah. So is it part of this you know, story? I, yeah. How, how much time do we have left, Bear? Got, I'd love got, to you get got into 12, it. Twelve more minutes. So run. All right. We're going to make good use of 12 minutes. Yeah, I'm going to pretend go like it. each one is an apostle uh, or okay. disciple there. All right. So, um, you know, law, law school. I actually wrote music in law school. Uh, oh, I set up a little recording studio in my um, in my apartment. But the second day of law school, I met my wife. Her name was, is Elise. She was from this little town called Peoria, Illinois, which I had frankly never heard of. I didn't even know where Illinois was, right? I knew where Chicago was, but I was like this dumb beach guy. Um, when you grew up on the beach, Bear, right, you could probably relate to this to some extent. I knew where the Bahamas was. I knew where the inlet was, right? There you go. Yep. He's got a picture. Um, she was really, really involved in the pro-life movement. She would pray every weekend at Planned Parenthood, which, by the way, the law school moved to Naples. A Planned Parenthood moved to Naples that same year and opened the same month. And so it was interesting. It was a pro-life law school. It is huge presence at Planned Parenthood. I started going every weekend to pray outside of Planned Parenthood, not because I wanted to pray outside of Planned Parenthood, but because this beautiful blonde was going and I absolutely did not want anybody else to stand next to her and to talk to her. So <laughs> I just sort of followed her everywhere she went. And a few months later, they everybody, um, I don't know, I guess I have a lot of energy or something. They asked me to become president of this pro-life club. So I went from being like, yeah, I'm pro-life. I don't really care what other people do. I'm not going to talk about it to literally running this pro-life club. And it really changed the course of my life. Wow. We went to the March for Life. I was blown away, snuck in backstage the following year. This would have been in probably 2010. I got to the March for Life really, really early. I wanted to be backstage. That's where all the big pro-life leaders were. I was like, I really wanted to meet these people. So I got there early and started helping the Knights set up. Nellie Gray found out that I had snuck in past her marshals and was so impressed that we became friends. And then she, long story short, she invited me to join the board of the March for Life. <laughs> so I became a board member by sneaking in backstage. And I was a board member from 2012 to uh, 2019. I still serve as outside counsel for the March for Life. Um, I started a, a thing called the Law of Life Summit, which is an annual conference that meets every uh, year the day before the march. And we bring lawyers and media and pro-life wow. leaders together. We do that event in D.C. And now we also do it in Naples. We have a big Naples summit, which happens in March. The second one is coming up this year. Um, where we, it's like a retreat where we go on boat rides, we have fellowship, but we also visit maternity homes you know, and pregnancy so centers. We got to take a break, but there's yeah. nothing so yeah, critical yeah. as having, that's a, I love that. The law of life. What a great title too. We're I'm going to get with, into the music on the other side. We're talking with Royce Hood. His radio shows truth, culture, life. Where can they find you, Royce? Roycehood.com. Easy to remember. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wastick adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming 
of Baron Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite everybody to go to uh, deepadventure.com, subscribe to our newsletter. If you do that, you get the video version of the radio show emailed to you every Saturday morning. You can also, also go to our store there, my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, is there. We have our guest today, Royce Hood. So you're, ta you're, ta you're talking stories. So you, you, you found this, this, this beautiful woman, and <clears throat> you're drawn to her, and the Lord draws you into the pro-life movement because of her. But what, you, you skipped the romantic part. What happened? Yeah. I, I, oh, we have two different versions of the story. Mine is she was chasing me around, but that's probably the wrong one. Yeah, don't I you hate definitely... it? I always tell people my, my wife was a stalker. Chasing right? me all over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wish. Yeah, they know what, <laughs> they, they know what camp, I, you know, it, and so is, yeah, we, I, it took her a while before she, um, you know, she was willing to go to the, the Planned Parenthood with me. The first time I invited her out on a date, she showed up with two friends. Um, so I, I went and, and by the way, in law school, right, you don't, you don't really have a lot of money. Um, and so I would, I really wind and dined her. I would take her out to dinners and all sorts of stuff. But anyways, it was funny. We, she eventually, I think, um, what I would go to daily mass with her as well. So we'd sit together in mass. And if it wasn't for her, I don't know if I would have gone to daily mass. Faith was important to me. I had this devotion to our lady. Um, but she's the reason why I just grew more and more in my faith and, and why I got so involved and in the pro-life movement. We want to thank uh, the women in our lives. You know, my, my book, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? You know, the wild, wild west was, was wild until women came. And then they, uh, they began to expect more of the man. You know, they, they, may, they said, you, you know, they're kind of standing there, you're a better man than that. And the, the real good woman will bring out the best qualities in a man in a, in a way that affirms him and uh, challenges him both. So that's beautiful. So go ahead. I'm. I, no, you know, I entered into that relationship with Elise and I knew I wanted to marry her. In fact, I told my chocolate lab, Bo, who went to law school with me, I took him on walks. I was like, Bear, I'm, I'm, or Bo, I'm going to marry this girl, right? And he didn't understand. He's a dog, right? Just wag his tail and look at me. Um, I knew I wanted my life to be different. Grew up in a broken home. I grew up not really having a strong father figure in my life. I wanted a lot of kids and I wanted to be a dad that I didn't have. And so that's, you know, knowing that I was feeling that call, that vocation of mine is marriage and fatherhood is something I take very, very seriously. So you asked about music and how the Lord works in mysterious ways. And my story, we could go all sorts of different directions, but I'll jump into it. So we got married after law school. We started having babies. Um, we have to, right now we have nine, three of which are in heaven and we have mm -hmm. six here. Our sixth child that we became pregnant with, we discovered at about 20 weeks that he had something called Potter's syndrome, which means no kidneys because there's no kidneys. There's no amniotic fluid. His lungs wouldn't develop. And li this little guy had about every other thing you can possibly imagine wrong with his body. He had so many physical challenges there was nothing we could do medically. We named him Fulton and all we could do was just pray. At 22 weeks, I was able to capture his heartbeat, the audio of that heartbeat. And we were able to use that as a, as the metronome for what would become known as Fulton's song. Mm -hmm. And I knew, I knew baby, we know babies can hear it like 18 weeks. Um, and they can recognize voices and start really understanding, you know, they can understand some sounds. So I wanted to be able to sing to him and, and tell his story and just let him know how important he was to us. Um, and so we Fulton song was was the result of that. And it's interesting, all that passion for music that I had growing up, it created this song is, I, I think, very beautiful. Um, and it's mm. it's been very powerful for us to continue to be able to share his life. We did not get the miracle we wanted. We were praying for a full miracle, a full healing for Fulton, but we got another miracle that we really needed. Medically, there was no reason for Fulton to pass in the womb. He should have been born alive and he would have suffered and struggled for a few hours and he would have slipped away. He died just after his 39 week ultrasound in the womb and he was still born on Good Friday of 2021. And it really was 
it was miraculous in so many ways. There's a picture that I will share with you, and I apologize I don't have it here on the screen for you now, but I can share it with you, of the 39-week ultrasound, which is just absolutely beautiful. And So with no amniotic fluid, you don't get 3D ultrasounds. There's not, mm-hmm. there's not enough liquid. We got like this amazing 3D ultrasound at 39 weeks. It was almost like he was like saying goodbye or something. It was mm-hmm. unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so the, the music comes full circle, and I still do work on music. Um, one other thing, if we have time that I just want to mention during the pregnancy with Fulton, we would listen to Fulton's song. We, my wife would play it for him, but she would also listen to the Benedictines of Mary who have mm. beautiful, uh, Latin music that you can listen to. They've had four albums, three of which have been in the top 10, which rounds everything out. Um, yes. I'm now working on a film about their founder, sister Wilhelmina. And we had no idea when we when we heard about Sister Wilmy. She's the nun that they discovered in Missouri that may be a, an incorruptible. We had no idea that connection, that spiritual spiritual connection. And Wilhelmina, by the way, was devoutly pro life. Actually, went to church for a while in Washington D.C. where Nellie Gray went, who started the mm-hmm. March for Life. Mm-hmm. So, so many. It's amazing how our faith, when we have faith, when we offer ourselves to be an instrument of God's will. How things have a way of segueing and connecting in ways that it's we like, could never it's, it possibly is, it, imagine. You know, uh, it's like poetry. You know, there's a story of the person who, um, if you go into the Sistine Museum, you know, and there's the Sistine Chapel, and, and you will see, see these beautiful tapestries. They're beautiful. How could anybody do that just with by weaving? You know, but if you look at the back of that, those tapestries, they're just a bunch of confusion back there. There's they're being tied off here and you, you, you in other words you don't really see any pattern at all so sometimes I think in life we're looking at God's creating this beautiful mural this beautiful tapestry in our life and he sees it all but we're kind of like on the other side looking looking at it and we go God what are you doing wrong you know why didn't you let me do this you know I, you know this is the best thing for me and all these sorts of things we don't know we just don't know the beautiful poetry the beautiful song the beautiful tapestry that God God's creating in our lives Amen. if we if we if we listen to him if we if we let go and let God yeah no that's very well said yeah my life has been a series of unplanned interesting coincidences but they're not I well, really you, feel you, like you, the you Lord's yourself been... wasn't on were on planned <laughs> that's right yeah that's right right I shouldn't be here so I think I take that seriously you know I record music now but I, I tell people and I've had a few like fairly big producers talk to me about some of my songs and I tell them the same thing. Look, I'm I'm no longer making music for the world, for other people. I'm making it for my children. Mm-hmm. My children who I'm leaving them messages in the music that I record now. And if other people like that music, awesome. But when I'm gone, I'm I'm trying to guide them. I'm trying to guide them to heaven because that's our, mm-hmm. our ultimate job as as fathers is to raise our children to be saints. Mm, I'd love to hear. Can people um, listen to your music or is it you keep it to yeah, yourself? Yeah, actually, if you um, you go to YouTube dot com forward slash Royce Hood um, you can hear Fulton's song and you can hear some of the other music and I'm on I'm on iTunes and Amazon music all the other places um, and I'm in I'm actually in the recording studio tomorrow so in between working on a film about Sister Wilhelmina which is called Incorruptible I am <laughs> working on music and we've got the radio show we've got the Law of Life Summit but most importantly uh, just being a husband and a father so how does it feel do you have ADHD I do. Me too. Yeah. So does yep. Jason Jones. Speaking of, you know, he always says, "I love, uh, I, I love having ADHD." But people around me don't like it, but I do. No, but it's interesting how, as a CPA, so many of my entre- entrepreneurial clients have ADHD because they see opportunity there. You know, there's all these so many things that we're juggling. But you know, when you, so there, were, yeah, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, you know, somebody told me about a book. I've never actually read it, but it was like this: the saying from the '60s, "The dumbing of society." Right, you have all these people that fit neatly into a box, and then you've got these other people that are sort of innovators, creative types, ADHD types, right? So we're put into this box, and I was told because of these things, I had dyslexia as well, I still mm-hmm. do, that you're never going to succeed academically, you're never going to be successful, right? You can't do these things. AD, ADD for me is the ability to multitask. It's like a yeah. superpower. It is a superpower, right? you know. You, but you know. I, 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 when I was training for my first uh, ninja black belt, I injured my leg. And uh, I went to the orthopedic surgeon who works especially with athletes. And he said every athlete that he, every exceptional athlete that he works with has, has, a, has an abnormality. That's what makes them special, you know. And so here you are. You're born, uh, your, your father and your mother donated the DNA. 
But God the Father is your Father. I'm not talking to the people out there listening. Even though you were unplanned and, you, and your, your dad wasn't there when you were born, God the Father infused in you this beautiful soul, this mind, this will, this emotion, this personality with these gifts and these talents. God infused that in you. So you're not a mistake. You know, God, 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 God the Father, he really is indeed our Father. He infused that soul so that you could have this relationship with him. And also, he made you in such a special and unique way that he has a plan just for your life, the people that are listening. No matter what you're up against or, or when you see uh, dreams that you have don't seem to be going your way, just say, thy will be done. Just say, thy will be done. And God has a plan for our lives. I know what I have in store for you. Plans for peace, not destruction. A future reserved for you, full of hope. If you seek me, I will let you find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me. Royce, we got to go. Where can people find you? RoyceHood.com. You can look me up on, uh, that's probably the easiest way. And you can also email me, just, you know, Royce uh, at LawLife.org. That's my email. Feel free to reach out if you're listening to this, you want to talk. I'm an open book, so have at it. Cool. Well, until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. 